Good day, everybody. My name is John Winkowski, and I am the Planetarium Coordinator here at the Besser Museum Planetarium. And today, I want to teach you all about the constellation of Orion, where it is in the sky, and how we can find it, using our fancy planetarium here. So, let's head on inside and take a look right now. Let's get started by bringing the lights down and looking at the sky in Alpina as it will appear tonight, weather permitting, of course. We're starting off our evening by looking south at 10 p.m. There are plenty of stars in the sky that we can see tonight, but to find Orion, we only need three of them. Now I'm going to shift our view of the planetarium to center on the southwest part of the sky. That way, we can see our target a bit easier. The three stars in question make up Orion's belt small diagonal line in the sky made by the stars in the center of the constellation of Orion. Most of you probably recognize Orion's belt, or have at least heard of it before. It's a rather striking pattern in the sky, and is a fantastic celestial landmark to use. In order to find Orion's belt at 10 p.m., we'll need to look more to the southwest than the south, hence why the planetarium shifted earlier. Now, Orion's belt will be about a hand to two hand lengths above the horizon at 10 p.m., which just means if you hold your hands out at arm's length, your hand's width should fill the space between the horizon and our three stars, this distance right here, with these three stars being Orion's belt and this white line being our horizon. Make sure to notice the distinct spacing and angle of Orion's belt. You don't want to get it mixed up with the Orion's sheaf right down here. Notice how these stars are closer together and angled at a completely different manner. So, these three stars can act as a bit of a red herring for those of you not used to finding Orion's belt, so just keep that in mind when you go to look at it tonight. Now, the belt is a great way to start with finding Orion, but the constellation has a lot more stars to explore. And if we want to see more of the constellation, we have to locate more of the great hunter's stars. So let's take a look. The two stars we're going to be starting with outside of Orion's belt are Betelgeuse and Rigel. Now, both of these stars are the two brightest stars in our constellation of Orion, and each one of them makes up a distinct portion of the constellation. Betelgeuse is in the top left corner of Orion, taking the place of his left armpit, while Rigel is directly in place of Orion's right foot, making a distinct spot in the sky for where to stop with this constellation. Using both of these stars with our belt right here, we can find the main body of Orion pretty easily. So, let's start with Betelgeuse, which is a bit above and to the left of our belt, as you can see here. Now, when I say above and to the left, I'm of course talking about the frame of reference that we have now. In reality, the belt and the stars may be at different angles throughout the evening. And we'll talk a little bit more about that later in our video, but right now I just want you to focus on the current pattern that we have at 10 o'clock tonight. Now that we found Betelgeuse, we're going to move back to Orion's belt, and we're just going to move in the exact opposite direction from where we found Betelgeuse and head down to Rigel. So with these two stars, like I said, we're going to be able to find the rest of the great hunter's body pretty easily. So, let's reveal the constellation as a whole. With the full constellation finally highlighted, we can see how Orion's belt, Betelgeuse, and Rigel are all valuable parts of this constellation. The belt gives us a good center point to work from, well, Betelgeuse shows us where Orion's top half is, and Rigel creates a half of Orion's legs. Now, you may have also noticed that Orion has a shield in one hand and a weapon in the other, as seen in these stars over here and 
over here. For those of you just trying to find Orion for one of the first times, I honestly recommend ignoring both of those groups of stars, as not only are the patterns a little bit more complicated, but the stars inside of them are also small, dim, and hard to see, and will probably not even be visible inside of Alpina's night sky due to our light pollution, which is just the effect from having so many lights on at night that it makes objects in the sky difficult to see. Now, if after all of this direction, you're still finding it a little hard to find Orion or maybe any other star in the sky, I would honestly recommend downloading a star map app on your phone. Most of them are cheap or free. I personally use Stellarium, but if you don't want to spend the $3, I understand in getting a different one. Okay, before we go today, I want to showcase one last thing when it comes to finding Orion or any other object in the night sky. And that being that our entire sky moves throughout the night. And everything will be changing its location throughout the evening. So let's start about 30 minutes after sunset, which is currently around 8 p.m. At this time, Orion will be between the south and southwest portion of our sky. And you'll notice that he's a bit higher than he was earlier. Now I'm gonna move time forward a little bit at an accelerated rate just to emphasize his movement. You'll see that as time begins to flow quicker, he starts to set in the sky, making a downward or even westward type arc. And with each passing moment, the constellation gets lower and lower in the sky. And we'll continue to set all the way up to 1 a.m., at which point Orion and almost all of the stars will be located below the horizon, which means that even if you're looking directly out on the lake, well, they'll be below the curvature of the Earth itself, and you can no longer see them. All right, everybody. This pretty much concludes our conversation for today. I hope you all had a good time and learned a little bit about The Great Hunter, and hopefully you can find it too. Stay tuned for more information from the Besser Museum Planetarium, and I'll see you all in the next episode. Bye.